let's come up with the ideal intermittent fasting, AKA time restricted feeding schedule for you. And when I say ideal, I mean, what are the variables that are negotiable? What are the ones that are non-negotiable? What is ideal for you will depend on the context of your life and what you are willing to do consistently. So first of all, we established based on the discussion with Sachin, who is truly the premier world expert in this area, who knows the animal and human scientific literature better than anybody has written this incredible review and for whom I consulted that you do not want to ingest food for at least, I want to emphasize at least 60 minutes post waking up. Second, you want to avoid ingesting any food of any kind, even one gram of sugar. Remember, this is the ideal one gram of sugar even would be too much for the two to three hours prior to bedtime. He also mentioned, ideally, you are spending eight hours in bed. I didn't tell you that earlier. I saved that for now. But ideally, you're sleeping that entire eight hours. But simply by being in bed for that eight hours and avoiding food after waking for an hour and before bed for two to three hours, you're starting to build out the duration of this fasted period. Again, the sleep-related fasting is especially important because of all the cellular repair processes that occur in the liver, in the gut, in the microbiome, in the brain, all over the body, and because of the way that that coordinates the expression of the clock genes that are then going to wick out and have many other positive effects on health, including weight and fat loss, but in addition to that, liver health, etc. An eight-hour feeding window as a target seems to be the best target feeding window, at least by my read of the literature and in discussing it with Sachin. Shorter feeding windows of four to six hours tend to lead to overeating and potentially increases in weight. Remember that most people tend to not adhere to the eight hour feeding window. They say eight hours, but they tend to eat outside of the eight hours a little bit on each side. So if your goal is a 10 hour feeding window, you might want to set it to nine hours or eight hours. This is based on thousands, if not tens of thousands of human subject data points that Sachin and colleagues have collected. Regular placement of the eating window or feeding window every 24 hours is important. You don't have to be absolutely rigid and neurotic about this but you don't want it sliding around on the weekend so that it's starting two hours later and ending two hours later a couple days a week because then you start to offset many of the positive health effects that have been demonstrated for time-restricted feeding. Remember, if you eat your food within a certain feeding window, but that feeding window shifts by a couple hours, it is effectively like jet-lagging your system. It is effectively like traveling a couple time zones over, eating there for a few days and coming back when in fact you're not traveling. And that's because of the way that food adjusts the circadian clock genes. When should that eight hour window be placed within each 24 hour cycle? Well, let's talk about ideal. Ideal, if you really want to maximize all the health benefits of time restricted feeding, you need to extend the fast around sleep on both sides. You would place it smack dab in the middle of the day. It would be a schedule in which you started eating, for instance, at 10 a.m. and you stopped eating at 6 p.m. An absolutely dreadful schedule for anyone that wants to have some semblance of a normal life. In my opinion, it's not really compatible with most schedules, although some people might be able to do it. Maybe you and your family or your friends, your you know, you're eating a late breakfast or a, and then you're having a latish lunch around 2 p.m. and then you have dinner at 6. And then assuming that you go to bed around 9.30 or 10 p.m., that is going to extract the maximum amount of weight-related, body fat-related, metabolic factor-related aspects of time-restricted feeding. Some people tend to fall into a category where they do best placing that feeding window later in the day 
and provided it doesn't run too close to your sleep. Remember, you need a two or three hour buffer before your sleep where you're not ingesting anything. That's in order to extract the benefits of time-restricted feeding. Well, then starting your feeding window at 12 p.m. and ending it at 8 p.m., plus or minus half an hour or so, day to day, seems like a perfectly reasonable schedule for some people starting at 2 p.m. and ending at 10 p.m. will be that schedule. Of course, you have to take into consideration when you exercise, if you exercise. For instance, I like to exercise early in the day if I run or if I do some moderate or light intensity exercise, regardless of what type of exercise it is, I have no trouble waiting until my feeding window kicks in around noon or even 2 p.m. But if I do high intensity weight training, for instance, early in the day, or if I run sprints and I do that at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., by 11 a.m., I am very, very hungry and it's hard for me to do other things, concentrate, etc. Now, I'm not neurotic about my feeding window. As I mentioned before, I kind of let it expand and contract a bit around the eight-hour mark and feel perfectly free to do that too. We're talking here in, in ideals, not in necessarily practicals. 